Okay, so we do like a cheesy intro and then stand by me when the night. Wait, is that okay? You just roll with it. This is all in. This is all being filmed right now. Yeah. Don't worry, we're, this isn't in it. Okay, we're talking compost with my plant friend Melody today, plant friends. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> grow YouTube show. Hi, plant friends. Uh, you've already met my plant friend Melody, who is a neighbor of mine who I've been gardening with this summer. Um, if you haven't already listened to the episode of the Blooming Girl Radio podcast that Melody is on, go listen because it's all about cultivating these amazing in-ground beds that she has cultivated over like the last how many decades three three decades so melody is the soil gardening expert and today we're going to talk about compost um mm. because compost is important it's very important it feeds the plants mm -hmm. it encourages a lot of micro activity in mm -hmm. the soil like the actinomycetes and and other small organisms and algae and other things that are good to help create a good bio system yeah and a good environment keeps it healthy mm -hmm. and uh, retains water yes. and also helps with aerating the soil so compost is important all uh, throughout all stages of the gardening process which is a lot of what I'm learning with Melody mm -hmm. we were talking about all the different ways we're going to incorporate compost into the garden this summer and I feel like we kind of came up with three different ways that will kind of either be using it at the beginning of creating a garden bed or throughout the season. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna show them to you today. First stop is the corn bed. We've got it prepped, so why don't we go over there? Okay. Okay, so Melody, so one thing I've learned from you, I'm learning a lot of really practical things from you. I feel like I know in theory, like put compost in a bed. I know in theory, you know, plant tomatoes deep, but you're teaching me like all the ins and outs of like the real practical ways of doing this on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about just like how you cut the bags of compost okay. open? Most people open the bags at the top and then you've got a very heavy bag to heft around the garden. Which is what I totally used to do. So what I do is I even out the amount of the potting soil or the amendment like the compost and I cut across half of the bag like this and then lift it up and now I've got potentially two bags that are going to be lighter than one whole big bag and then I just come up across the back and cut it again you can do it with scissors or a knife and now I've got something that's more manageable to pick up and walk around with so freaking smart <laughs> and it's like yeah it's such a more manageable way to just take half of it because you don't ever need the whole bag mm -hmm. so you get half as strong yeah exactly <laughs> so what are okay so we're here in the corn bed we have previously turned all of the soil so it's already light and airy um you've got some squash interplanted uh what's the plan sprinkle it across about two inches deep and then we're going to turn it in mm -hmm. to the top couple of inches and then we're gonna plant. So when you're sprinkling, you're aiming to get two inches of compost on top of the entire soil bed right. when prepping the beginning of a soil bed. Yeah, and if you do that for each bed each year, then you build your soil on an annual basis because just like you need to eat three meals a day, feeding your garden every year with compost is very important to build the soil, build the microclimate too. Okay, so basically with this easy to carry amount, I just, run a couple of inches across the soil because we're going to plant the corn about nine inches apart so it doesn't make and corn is a heavy feeder so it pays more attention to uh, giving it lots of good food to reach out in horizontally in the course of us doing that i think it's increased like 10 to 20 degrees melody i'm sweating bullets <laughs> it was it, it, in 20 20 minutes it went up 10 degrees oh so my god it's hot now probably 71 now so we've been 51 to 61 now to 71. <sighs> so it's very frustrating when you've got critters in your garden because they they ate my pea seeds, so I had to start them in flats, and then they they ate everything. They ate the zinnia seeds, they yeah. ate the cucumber seeds, they ate the bean seeds, they ate the Pes corn seeds. Pesky. So I've been replanting corn, and I ended up putting the flats in the house so they couldn't get to them, but they still got to them and ate a bunch of of the seeds anyway. And this one didn't germinate, or there's one coming up, mm -hmm. so they're a little late. But anyway, so it's a battle with nature at all times. <laughs> so corn is a very heavy feeder, and it needs to cross-pollinate with other plants. 
of the same corn family and uh, you want to make sure that you don't interplant different corn seed with other corn seed that have different germination times and different maturity times because you won't get good cross-pollination. So make sure when you plant corn it all has like 68 days or 75 or 70. They all have the same maturation date so they'll cross-pollinate with each other. Okay. They're very heavy feeders which is why we set up the bed with a lot of compost and a lot of organic fertilizer. Oh yeah, we put, for those who didn't see, we put a Spoma Garden Tone which is 344 along with the compost right. when we prep the beds. And the first number, the three, is for nitrogen. And what we want is a fruiting body to happen and uh, flowers to emerge. So using the 344 gives us more potassium and, and phosphorus, which will encourage that and also strong, hefty stalks so they don't break in the wind. Uh, if we just put something high in nitrogen, we get a lot of green growth and no fruit. Yeah. So, always, so for things like lettuce, you can use something that has more of the first number. The nitrogen so it could be like 533 three, which would be fine okay let's get to it nine inches apart you do not okay. want to plant corn in a straight line you want to plant it in multiple rows so they'll have more of a chance of pollinating this is a very handy tool it's got a serrated edge and it's got a smooth edge and a nice point so you can dig out weeds or dig up and transplant or dig a hole to plant something i just got one of these garden tools i'm just trying to give you guys a close-up on the actual blade, it marks the inches. So if you're supposed to like go one inch deep, two inch deep, three inch deep, and then these little dots continue that. So I'm gonna be getting deep. Cause how deep did you say, Melody, it's gotta go? How deep? Yeah. Oh, nine inches apart. Which nine is, inches apart. Which is the middle dot. So we'll use this to measure, mm -hmm. to get them apart. But it, it's also good to, to loosen up the soil to the, to the depth of the six inch blade. And then when you go to plant, you can push it down and pull it across, pull it, up, pull it over. So you've got a long space to put the seedling down into. And you're planting it real deep. Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of the finished product of probably one third of the corn bed. Um, it's three, we've got kind of three rows and Melody, like we explained, used this to kind of measure. So they're nine inches apart on all sides. And as they sway in the breeze, they're gonna cross pollinate. So this is how to prep one full bed with compost on to the next project. All right, plant friends, for the second way we're using compost today, I've got my little um, half bag of compost. We're gonna top dress. You can hear the rooster, he's really, he wants to be part of this video. Um, we're gonna, we're in the flower bed, so Melody has a bunch of amazing flowers. We've got some cosmos blooming, beautiful lavender, some zinnias, lots of marigolds. Um, this is a bed of irises. Uh, what else do we have? Wild phlox, echinacea, she's got everything. Um, Melody said that she wants to top dress all of the flowers to give them a little bit of an extra boost now that we're getting a lot of rain and like we're like really into the growing season now. So to top dress, she says she's gonna do it once. <laughs> oh my God, that rooster. She said she's gonna do it once now. Uh, we're in the middle of June and then we'll do this again in August. So this is just maintenance. It's not something you're doing like every week in your garden. It's something that you're doing a couple times throughout the growing season just to replenish those nutrients as, uh, you know, obviously these plants, as they're growing, they're gonna suck up a lot of the nutrients from the ground and we're gonna go back in. So the top dress, it's very simple. You just get a little bit of compost and then you're gonna basically dress the root the, uh, right around the flower in the stem and put a nice little amount of compost right around each plant. <coughs> Melody, how am I doing? Am I doing it good? Just like this much, right? Yep, that's good. 
and it also helps to improve the soil for next season as well. Right. We're always feeding the soil, just like you're always feeding your own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Not you personally, but everybody. <laughs> I am always, and especially with all the stuff we're growing in here. Well, you are what you eat, so if you want good produce and nice flowers and nice herbs, you have to feed the soil. And feeding it with organic fertilizer and organic compost like Espoma, you, you're doing yourself Shout a Shout out, favor. sponsored by. <laughs> okay, two out of three done, Melody, and we're sweating so much. <laughs> it's, it got so hot out of nowhere. And I have a tip for you yes. if you're hot in the garden. Take a washcloth, dip it in cold water, and if it's really hot, you can actually, from corner to corner, put a row of ice cubes and then roll it up and fold it in half again so the ice cubes are safe in the middle and put it around the back of your neck. It'll keep your body cool. It's such a game changer. And then if you need to, you can go. Yeah, <sighs> that's what I've been doing. We Melody had a greenhouse raising party the other day. All of us came to help her build a new greenhouse and it was 91 degrees and in the middle of it Melody came out with a huge basin of ice water with uh, towels for Wash everyone clothes. and we were all just like dripping down. <laughs> okay so I've got this um, blush sweet cherry tomato blush variety from Territorial Seed Company. I started it from seed in Melody's greenhouse. It's time to graduate. Oh yeah it's got some weeds in it. Um, I'm gonna plant it deep and we're gonna put it in one of Melody's beds. As you can see, Melody started this bed. She amended the soil, um, planted the stuff, and then mulched it. So we're just gonna continue this bed. So Melody, what's the process here? So um, rather than, because the tomato is gonna to be in here, rather than dig the whole bed, uh, which is a lot of extra labor, just figure out where your tomato plants are gonna go spaced out two or three feet, depending on whether they're determinant or indeterminate. And improve the soil where the tomato plant is going to be rather than everything. Yeah. Um, depending on what you're rotating. You should never plant the same crop in the same place the following year. Mm -hmm. Always rotate it. It's good to do an eight year rotation. So in eight years we can bring tomatoes back here, but not until then. This is the original soil that was here on my property. It's clay. Here, I'll take it's it. It's just orangey looking. And then I've improved it over many, many years. And this bed actually had a compost on top of it. So the top of this is in pretty good shape. So this, this was Melody's original soil. It's brown. It's a light brown. And it's, uh, it's got obviously way more clay in it. This is the new soil that Melody's cultivated. It breaks apart way easier and it's dark, dark brown, almost black. So she knows what she's talking about. Okay. All right. So, so I dug a hole, I loosened the soil around the hole too so the roots can penetrate that. And I'm gonna take a nice shovel full of compost and sprinkle it around and kind of mix it up with some of the soil that is here. So here's what we're working with this nice juicy tomato. The roots are just starting to circle the bottom of the pot, but it's got a really nice, healthy white root system. I'm trying to focus, focus. And, mmm, it smells so freaking good. And the blush variety is like, a, a, it's supposed to be a pink cherry tomato. Um, that's a little hardier than sun golds and it's supposed to be real like that. All right, let's get this in the ground. So I have a, some Espoma. Garden uh, Tone. 344. Four. You could also use their tomato fertilizer, but this works well too. 344. Four. It encourages flower blossoms and strong stems and healthy plant. And I put a, about a handful in there, not even. And then I'll mix it in. I've got my gloves on. Okay, you're going to do that. Like that with the shovel. Shovel up to Buffalo. <laughs> okay. And then we'll push some of this aside so you can plant it deeper. Should I remove these two leaves or leave them, you think? I'll take that one off. Okay. And then and plant then, right up right, to there. You got it. Okay. okay. You do good work, Maria. <laughs> you do, you're a good teacher, Melody. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. 
so now we've got the compost in the hole. Oh, look at all these earthworms. We've got the compost in the hole, ready to feed our tomato baby so it can grow big and strong and make us a whole lot of fruit. All right, and pushing it down into the ground helps it to blend and against the existing soil. Otherwise you end up with air pockets and yeah. the roots can grow through air. So there. Okay, Good. how does that look? Wonderful. Okay. And then we'll water that in yeah. well and mulch it. There's already got some little flowers on it. So yeah, yes. now we're gonna water all the things we just did in the garden bed and then I need to go lay down and take a nap because it's been a lot. Oh no, there's lots more to do. We have to water, we have to mulch, we have to weed. There's more planting. No, no, it no naps until later. <laughs> it never stops in Melody's garden. <laughs> Do 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 do